In the 1960s, our classic British cars started coming with alternators. That was a quantum leap. Alternators were less expensive to build than generators, more effective at low RPMs than generators, smaller than generators, lighter than generators, required less maintenance than generators, and came with their own built-in voltage regulator. This is a better package, but it means we need to relearn how to test our charging system. That relearning leads to a pleasant surprise. You can test virtually everything you need to test in this with a voltmeter. That's right, just a voltmeter. Now a person might sound surprised and ask, how am I going to diagnose and service something like this without a box of tools and test equipment? The question is valid, but it overlooks the realities of our modern world. With the cost of labor and the difficulties of finding original internal parts for the original alternators, it's usually faster and less costly to simply replace a defective alternator. So all we really need to know is this, is my alternator faulty or not? We can determine that with a voltmeter. So let's do this. Okay, we suspect we have a problem with our charging system. Maybe the lights look dim, or maybe we went out this morning to start the car and the battery was almost dead. To test, we want the alternator to be in the car. We want all the wires and the cables and the belt, everything on it the way it would be if it was driving. We want to take and set our voltmeter. If she's got a dial, turn it over to 20 volts DC. If your meter has buttons, use the buttons to set it for 20 volts DC. If your meter automatically sets its own range, be sure it's on DC and let the meter work on its own. We want to take the red lead and go on the back of the alternator where the big cable comes out. That's the one that goes straight back to the battery. We're going to connect right to that. Okay, that's it. We're not removing anything. We're just going to piggyback on top of it. The black lead, which is our ground, we're going to connect right to the case of the alternator. By connecting to the case of the alternator, we're measuring what's going on right here. Nothing else in the car is involved. The ground is here. The power is here. This is going to tell us what's really going on. And that's it. Two wires. Because your alternator is directly connected to your battery, as soon as you put this red lead on and this black lead on, you're going to see battery voltage on your meter. Okay, and that's fine. It should be at around 12 and a half volts. Now, start the car. Bring the RPMs up to around 1500 revolutions per minute. The meter should be reading in the 13 volt range to the 14 volt range. If she does, she's fine. She passed the test. Now, a couple of details. A fully charged 12 volt battery should yield about 12.6 volts. So a fully charged battery in your car that's neither charging nor discharging should read around 12.6 volts. We start the car, that will change. Okay, we have our meter connected just as it is above. Okay, everything's fine. We've got the red wire here, the black wire here, everything's running and the car is going. Okay, we want the, if the car is running, the ignition system, the coil and all that's involved in that are going to be drawing power. So if the car is running and we see the meter giving us 12.2, maybe 12.3, 12.4 volts, less than the 12.6 that a fully charged battery has, that usually means the alternator is doing nothing and the car is running off the battery. If the battery is showing more than 12.6, the alternator is involved and charging. However, if it's not up to the 13 or 14 volt range as we were looking for earlier, that usually means that the alternator is weak. We have to address that. We can address it in just a moment. Now, imagine we get a reading, let's say 13 or 14 volts, and the alternator is doing its job. We're happy she passed the test. However, remember, we had a reason to be concerned about our alternator in the first place. There may still be something wrong someplace else. Remember, the lights were weak, or we couldn't start the car this morning. So let's leave the car running. Everything is exactly the way that it was. Take a look at your voltmeter. Let's, let's say for argument that she's doing 13.8 volts. I have 13.8 volts coming out of this alternator right now. Remove the leads from your meter and connect them now to your battery. Now remember, your battery has battery posts and then there's a cable going around the end of it, a clamp right there. We want to measure right to the post, not the clamp. Take the red lead from your meter and put it on the positive post, put the black lead on the, on the negative post, and now we're ready to see what's going on. If it's not giving us what we got here earlier because they're connected, something's wrong. Imagine, for example, the meter said I have 13.8 volts coming out of here, but at the battery we only have 12.8 volts. Something's wrong. There's a cable that's dirty or damaged going from the battery to the alternator. That's the problem. It's easy to find. 
There's a video on YouTube from Moss Motors. So Moss Motors voltage drop and you find the video right there and it'll tell you how to do it and you can do it with your voltmeter. So a couple of conclusions. If the alternator is not putting enough, vo out enough voltage in the very first test, the alternator has a problem. You're done. If the alternator is putting out enough voltage, but the battery is not getting it, we have a cable issue. And if we have a cable issue or a battery end issue, a simple voltage drop test using the same voltmeter will find it. Now, before we say goodbye, let's talk about three tidbits. First, an old test for generators was to disconnect the battery with the motor running. That made perfect sense. If the generator was making electricity, the motor would run on that. So if we disconnected the battery and the car kept running, the generator had to be making electricity. And that was commonly used as a popular test. Do not do that in a car with an alternator. Let me repeat that. Do not disconnect the battery in a car that has an alternator in it when the motor's running. The voltage regulator inside the alternator can be damaged by doing that test. Use the test I just gave you. Two wires and test. It's easy, it's fast, it's clean, and it works. Second tidbit. Lots of people have pulled an alternator from a newer car and put it in their classic British car. The belief that an alternator for newer cars produces more current. They do. A newer car has computers, electric sensors, air conditioners, rear window defrosters, power windows, and lots more, and they all need power. That need for a powerful alternator is there to feed them all. The original alternator in our classic British cars was probably around 35 to 45 amps. An alternator from a newer car can produce 60, 70, or over 100 amps. The alternator belonging to this technician's wife is rated at 200 amps. Putting that excess power into your classic car leads to two problems. First, the wires in your car were never made to carry more than a certain amount of current. When excess current is introduced, things get hot, things get damaged. Second, an alternator draws a lot of power from the motor to make electricity. If you put a high output alternator into your classic car, the power drain on the motor can be so significant, there will be times when it feels like you're towing a boat. Now, somebody might ask the question, well, if a more powerful alternator is, is so power hungry, how can small modern cars use them? It's a great question. And the answer is computer control. The modern cars have these big alternators in them, but they also have the computer watching everything. Imagine you're driving along and a rock is rolling down the hill and you want to get around it before you get hit. You put the gas pedal all the way to the floor, you swerve and you go back. When you push the gas pedal to the floor, the computer knows. It knows right now that something's wrong, you need all the power. And the computer starts turning off seat heaters, turning off rear window defrosters. If it wants to, it can turn off the whole alternator. That leaves all the power the engine can produce to move the car. Okay, as soon as it gets, starts going like she's supposed to again, she starts turning things back on. Our classic cars don't have that computer control. Putting a big alternator in there is only shooting yourself in the foot. The last thing, alternators make current, or make AC more specifically, okay? Our car wants DC current, okay? So the alternator is making AC inside and the car needs DC. The alternator has diodes inside that filter the current so that only DC gets out to the car's electric system. If AC leaks out of the alternator, the battery might not be able to charge as it should, and a failed diode will let AC leak out. This can be a little tricky to diagnose because your alternator has three current generating windings inside it. If one of those diodes goes bad, you're going to lose the benefit of one of the three windings. The other two are still functioning, so you can drive the car with this crippled alternator because it's still charging, the red light and the dashboard doesn't come on. However, this alternator produces one third less current than normal. And these classic British cars, the electric load on the system is pretty low. So unless you drive with your lights on, the car whose alternator has a bad diode might run just fine, except for a possible battery charging issue. So how do we test for a failed diode? Get your voltmeter again. Connect your voltmeter as we did before, just like before. Everything's set. Set your meter to read 10 volts AC. If your meter will go down to there, go to 5 volts AC. That would even be better. If your meter can't go as low, as I just mentioned, you can set it for 20 volts AC. That will serve. Start the engine and bring the RPMs up to around 1500 revolutions per minute. Turn the lights on. We want the alternator to be working. Now note, I told you to set your meter to AC. 
we usually set our meters to DC when testing everything in our car. By selecting AC, your meter will ignore the DC voltage and focus on AC. If AC is leaking out of this alternator, your meter will see it. The diodes are supposed to block the AC from getting out of the alternator. If a diode goes bad, it will let some AC out. For the simple alternators that our classic British cars had, anything over 0.5 volts AC or anything more than one half of one volt AC is too much. Okay? Remember though, you're probably going to see a little bit of AC irrespective. The diodes in these are not perfect, so a small amount of AC will get out. And if you've got a sensitive meter, you may see it. Typically, you're going to see one one hundredth of a volt or two one hundredths of a volt or three one hundredths of a volt sneaking out. If that's going on, don't worry about it. But one half of one volt AC is a lot, and we need to put a stop to it. That means there's a problem with the diode. And again, we can check it with a voltmeter. So today we've learned different technology in a different era call for different testing. A voltmeter is the ideal tool. Remember, using this, we don't have to use that old test of disconnecting the battery when the motor is running. It's bad for the alternator anyway, and it takes too long. Just simply connect up your meter like we showed you, and it will work. Your voltmeter will tell you if your alternator is working as it should. Your voltmeter will tell you if the alternator's electricity is not getting to the battery. Your voltmeter will help you to do a voltage drop test if you have a cable problem or a dirty connection. Your voltmeter will help you to diagnose a failed diode. All you need to know is if the alternator is functioning as it should or not. Your voltmeter can do that. You can do that.